What's up, YouTube? Capital G here. Got an awesome duel between fan favorite decks. Well, Thunder Dragons aren't really technically in the TCG yet. That's gonna be uh, they're gonna be released in Soul Fusion. Although you know it's based on an old archetype that really wasn't an archetype. Either way, when we get these, I think people are gonna enjoy them. They're uh, obviously competitive in the OCG. Then we got Super Quantum's up at the top, and I got a question about Super Quantum's because I think that they definitely have some fans out there. Why exactly did people drop this archetype? I know everybody first you know reaction or first thing they're gonna say is kaiju 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 and i get that but i don't know i still feel like super quantums have access to one of the best boss monsters in all of Yu-Gi-Oh. you know how when your opponent activates your waking the dragons you get your ultimate falcon and you win the duel super quantums can basically do that at will and i just feel like it's still a really ridiculously strong play even a master rule four i honestly feel like you know super quantums like being a vampire yeah there's a couple of things that can kill vampires like sunlight and you know garlic and shit like that but outside of like two or three things they're basically fucking unkillable and i feel that you know kind of that kind of applies with uh you know great magnus so we're gonna see exactly what's gonna happen here I believe Thunder Dragons are up first, and he's going to start off with a pretty decent board, if I don't say so myself, making that Link Karibo using the Solar Battery Man, and, uh, well, I think it's Battery Man Solar in the TCG. Yeah, I don't know why they wanted to mix the words up, <laughs> but they did, and he still gets his Super Bowl Dragon, as well as the Aeon Thunder Dragon, which is it's basically just a big beat stick at this point. So, how exactly are the Quantums going to respond? He's going to start off with the uh, Sky Striker side, and that's going to be able to net him... Uh, a Kagari on board goes for Land Falinkus. I think he just wants to open up some extra monster zones potentially just so that he can get to Great Magnus. He's going to go ahead, he's going to make the win one. He's going to book that Super Bolt. Okay, fair enough. Goes for Brilliant Fusion, goes for Trick Clown. That's probably going to try to set up. Mm, let's see exactly. That might be Tribute Summon. Red Layer is going to be used. He's going to Tribute Summon his green. Is going to pop the copy of Link Karibo. And now he has green back. And look at this. He got all three of them on the field at the first turn. You guys know what that means. He's probably going to trade in that field spell for Great Magnus himself. And uh, it's, it's, it's sure to be coming down the road. So there is the Great Magnus. And this card has four materials on it. Now you know what happens when Great Magnus gets four materials. And, you know, he has a bunch of XCs. But when Great Magnus gets four materials, it is unaffected by all other card effects effects and that is amazing because this card is 3600 attack so it's not exactly the easiest thing to attack over and even if your opponent could potentially out it with like utopia the lightning it still has that ability to spin a card uh back to your opponent's deck during their turn so you could just get rid of whatever problem monster is trying to attack over it that's why i say outside of kaijus it can be difficult now the thing is the real question we have to ask ourselves in this duel is can thunder dragons outgrade magnus and the, the answer is yes thunder dragons actually because of the thunder dragon origin they can actually get their thunder dragon to be pretty damn beefy and they can attack over it so the question here is can he just get enough resources and can he actually do it so he's going to summon the summer vacation link monster i think he's trying to get to not super bolt dragon but he actually wants to get to this guy right here thunder dragon lord because he's 32 and if he activates that thunder dragon origin this guy will go to 3700 attack which is enough to kill that great magnus but it's going to be a little bit of a struggle solar battery man's going to activate he is going to destroy the vacation which i feel like he probably should have went after this guy but whatever because this guy is really the card that's going to threaten you and he is eventually going to get there if you give him the opportunity if you give him enough time so again he's not attack he's going for raw damage which is fine but that finally allows him to get to the origin thunder dragon or the uh, yeah thor thunder dragon origin origin thunder dragon whatever he finally gets to it and now his monster is over uh it's 3700 attack now the thing is he can spin it right now he could just go ahead and get this off the board but then he would be susceptible to to card effects and i'm not sure if he wants to do that knowing that his opponent still has like three cards in hand like maybe you don't want to take that risk now that was a really really stupid allure of darkness <laughs> he ends up losing three cards for that allure that wasn't troll at all to lose all your impermanences so yeah he is up he is up or he is going to attack now the great thing about great magnus and why this card is so fantastic is even when you do finally run it over your opponent just gets three more xc monsters on board to protect it so even when those die as long as you have the field spell it's really not that big of a deal so you think all right cap well he took down the great magnus is gg no re but is it gg no re this man has field spells for days he is going to 
uh, actually nuke his opponent's board with the Thunderclap Skywolf. The problem is these um, these quantum monsters don't have to be on the field. They can actually be used from the graveyard. So you see right here, he's basically just, is he waiting for the green one? Okay, I'm not exactly sure what he's waiting for, but don't worry. I'm pretty sure he is going to drop the uh, Great Magnus a second time. And he gets kind of low here. He has uh, just 5,100 life points. That's actually not that low. He's still over 50%. And he has just, look how many... <laughs> Look how many field spells this man has access to. But you see Great Magnus is coming back. Now, Great Magnus at this point only has three materials. So it isn't unkillable. It is affected or it can be affected by card effects. But it's still a 3,600 attacker that has the ability to basically go Madoche Teramisu on your opponent during their turn at that. So it is still a little touch and go. Can he kill Great Magnus a second time? And again, I think the answer is actually yes. <laughs> he uses the Origin Thunder Dragon. And at this point... He's going to summon another Thunder Dragon Lord, and he should be able to activate its effect. Yep, he's going to activate Thunder Dragon Lord's effect. He's going to pop Great Magnus, but it just doesn't matter. Great Magnus is just going to forever float, and even under Master Rule 4, since those monsters are not being summoned from the extra deck, it doesn't matter. You know, you don't have to summon them to the extra monster zone. Now, at this point, I think he got a little frustrated. He's like, damn it, Cap, I can't kill this guy. He goes into Borolo Dragon, and then he's actually going to go into the uh, Thunder Dragon Lord. Borolo Dragon or Boros War Dragon? Mm maybe the sword dragon would have actually been better instead of the low dragon i guess the low dragon does cut down attack but i think sword dragon might have been better but unfortunately what a top deck he gets soul charge and there just seems to be no reprieve for the thunder dragon player he cannot simply or he, he just can't get from under the shadow of great magnus as he is going to summon it for the third time this is great magnus part three this time it's personal the second time was the sequel wasn't always as good as the uh, original but the third one definitely lived up the expectations and since it has four materials now instead of the three that it previously had it is unaffected and no one i don't believe any Yu-Gi-Oh deck is going to kill great magnus three times in a duel maybe you can kill it once you get lucky maybe you get super lucky and you kill it twice but you're not gonna fucking kill this thing three times in a duel so i just think at that point <laughs> duel's basically over and he is finally able to finish off his opponent i guess maybe in the end all of that battle damage that he was doing in the earlier turns instead of taking out the thunder dragon lord actually paid off because you know he's able to kill his opponent even though he was attacking a 2800 um attack monster and this sky striker engage obviously the the mobilized engage wasn't able he wasn't going to be able to use it because he had too many monsters in his main monster zone let's see what his next card was going to be a lore of dark oh i can't click his deck i wanted to see if he would have blind a lord <laughs> could he potentially drawn an out if he didn't die like could there have been an out there that that's that's actually what i'm uh i'm wondering wait did he go on the battle phase in the turn that he used soul charge i just realized that did, did that happen all in one turn because if so then uh ygo pro is bugging or maybe he actually just uh no 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 he definitely attacked there that was weird i feel like he just activated soul charge and then he went for um what's it called he went for battle phase in in the same turn maybe that wasn't in the same turn anyways hopefully you guys enjoyed the short duel if you did give the video a thumbs up thank you guys watching as always subscribe if you have not already you know what i don't think people are going to care much about thunder dragons i've shown that deck off a billion times on this uh channel but people might want to see the uh super quantum so I'll, I'll go ahead and show super quantums right now all right so this is the uh super quantum deck that you guys saw really interesting this guy has a uh pretty big focus on resolving brilliant fusion not just the uh, running the brilliant fusions themselves but then running pretty much the entire predator plant engine in here i assume that that's just to get to brilliant fusion because it seems to be the only target in here you also have your trick clown and really a, a decent amount of performages in here that i also think that are pretty much only in here for brilliant fusion I mean well no I, I guess you can you can discard cards from your hand for the uh the field spell so i guess that kind of makes sense where if you happen to draw damage juggler if you happen to draw um trick clown and they're just not useful for you know whatever reason you can discard them and uh, this card will summon itself so that can be pretty good and actually it can be pretty good like this might be a spicy play if you discard uh, off the field spell if you discard like the trick clown and you uh, get the trick clown on the field and then you actually normal summon your phantom sky blaster 
monster, that'll be like five monsters on field, right? Or it'd be like four or five monsters. That'll be definitely a lot. I think that's the whole reason that people used to run Volcanic Shell in the deck was mainly just for the field spell to have like good discard fodder. Um, I think the Sky Striker engine definitely makes sense because it gives you the access to like Link 2s really quickly. And it's just kind of like a one card engine. Although once you get rolling, you definitely wouldn't want to top deck this. But I think once you get Great Magnus out, like your win condition is just Great Magnus. So even if you do uh, dead draw a bunch of cards, because not a, not a lot of these cards are going to be good top deck cards once uh, Great Magnus is on the field. Maybe like Phantom Sky Blaster, a lot of these will just kind of be dead. I think that um, they won't. It'll be like a little less uh, inconsequential. I do wonder, like, I don't know, I, I saw, like, we saw him summon Great Magnus so many times, it makes you wonder if maybe there should be uh, three copies of the card in here, but it looks like the extra deck is just so damn tight, I wonder what you would even, uh, you know, try to take out, and realistically, you wouldn't, like, even though Great Magnus died twice in that duel, you would, you really wouldn't think that you have to summon it three times, so I can kind of understand why there's only two in here, but, you know, I still feel like there, there there's potential. Whenever you have a boss monster in an archetype that can can be reliably summoned turn one and the boss monster is this the boss monster is unaffected by all card effects a la ultimate falcon and you can play against decks like ultra guys and just straight up win off of just that one card i mean if your opponent doesn't have a kaiju you just win off of just strictly that one card i feel like there will always be potential in that archetype under master rule three under master rule four etc etc and i believe that super quantums are supposed to be one of the archetypes that are rumored to be getting a link monster and link frames three so i don't know maybe that'll end up being something that greatly affects the deck if it ends up being true but whatever you guys think leave it in the comment section below thank you guys for watching as always subscribe if you have not already and turn on that notification bell for daily videos